Alright, got student asked me on how to prove the perpendicular of the gradient. Uh, if you study math or MF, I think you've definitely heard about a formula called M1 multiply M2 equals to negative 1. Alright, or some book that actually just write M2 equals to negative 1 over M1. Basically, they are the same, just a different way you want to arrange them. So right now, my objective is, actually, how am I going to prove this one? Actually, there's two ways we can uh, do it. The first way is actually quite simple, but it's less formal. So basically, you imagine. So let's say you have an x axis and y axis here. Then you have a line. Okay, this, this line, I just randomly give some random number. Like, let's say this is 5 and this is 2. Alright, so in order to find the gra gradient for this line, I call M1. La. So you should know, in order to find the M1, this one is 0. Right? You can either use a coordinate or you understand it's a y divided by x. It's basically very fast. You know it's 2 over 5. It's your first gradient. So if I want to find my second gradient, so that means you imagine if this line rotate 90 degree rotate 90 degree so it will go something like this isn't it so you just imagine here is 3 that uh, is 5 and 2 so i will get something like 5 and 2 make sense so therefore i have 5 and 2 for this one so let's say i want to find the second gradient so the second gra gradient you of course you can say so i know this coordinate lah. this coordinate is negative 2 5 yeah i can use the coordinate and origin which is 0 0 to find the second gradient basically your second gradient is just negative 5 over 2 then if I want to prove the first gradient multiply the second gradient which is 2 over 5 multiply negative 5 over 2 then I can easily get a negative 1 for perpendicular because if you rotate 90 degree that means the angle in between them is 90 degree isn't it alright this is method 1 yeah the second method is like uh, more formal and definitely you need to do more work <laughs> for a second method. So second method, same thing, you have x and y exit. So let's say I, I give it a limit. So let's say I uh, just assume here is 1. So therefore this coordinate, this one is 0, uh, or origin 0, 0. So this coordinate is called 1. I do not know exactly what is the y, so I just call it a uh, y1. Okay, so if I want to find a gradient for this line, then you can use the gradient formula, right? Y y1 minus 0, and then, so y1 minus 0 over x1 minus 0, 1 minus 0. Let's say this one is my first gradient, first gradient, okay? So the first gradient is basically same as y1, right? Isn't it? Because you have simplified is y1 over 1. So it's same as a y1. So I have a y1 here. So this coordinate, I can erase my y1. I call 1 and M1. Then I'm going to do the same thing for another line, which might be perpendicular to it. So here I have an M2. So I would I assume they will have the same uh, one unit here. So this one is basically called 1 and Y2. Isn't it? So same thing if I want to get the second gradient. So Y2 minus 0 over 1 minus 0 equals to my M2. Then you should realize M2 is actually equals to the Y2. Internet. So I can change my y2 into a m2. Then we're trying to do the uh, length formula. So just in case some students are a bit lost now, uh, length formula is basically quite simple. It's just uh, x square, uh, sorry, x2 minus x1 square, x2 minus x1 square plus y2 minus y1 square. Okay, or we can just straight away use the Pythagoras also can right? because I know this length is 1, this length is m1. So therefore, if I want to know the length for this line, it's basically quite easy, right? Square root 1 plus m1 square. Same idea, if I want to get a length for this one, you can use the distance formula if you want to, or I just use the Pythagoras because here is 1, here is m2, right? So it's square root of 1 plus m2 square okay it's a Pythagoras then how can we describe the distance here because you can see distance here is a changing of the y right so you can use a y1 minus y2 or y2 minus y1 it doesn't matter so I just call it a um, higher value minus the uh, smaller value so I just say m1 minus m2 
Okay, if this one is 90 degree, that means we can apply the Pythagoras A square plus B square equals to C square, right? C will be my hypotenuse. A and B will be either uh, any of this. Lah. So uh, let me erase some of the thing here so I have more space. So I will just say this line M1 square. So square root and square, no more square root already. Uh, never mind, lah, I just write it down. So 1 plus M1 square, square, A square, plus B square, square of the square root of 1 plus M2 square, equals to C square. This is my C, right? Which is uh, the distance of this one. So you can just do the M1 minus M2. So which is M1 minus M2 square. So if I cancel the square and square root, I got 1 plus M2, M1 square, square and square root. Then I get 1 plus M2 square. This one, if I expand it, I should get something like M1 square uh, plus M2 square and then minus 2M1, M2. Okay, M1 square and M1 square I cancel because they minus out each other. M2 square and M2 square I minus. Then 1 plus 1, which is 2, equals to minus 2M1, M2. So if I divide negative 2, so my M1 multiply M2 will equals to negative 1. So I rewrite the entire thing. M1 multiply M2 equals to negative 1. They are right, proven. Uh, proven. Okay, so the second method you can see is a lot more longer and then I somehow I need to use a Pythagoras and even a distant formula. But I don't think it's distant formula uh, is necessary here because I purposely choose the origin uh, zero. So it's easier for you to find the gradient and at the same time easier for you to find the length of it. Alright, I hope this short video can help you understand on how to prove the perpendicular formula. Thanks for watching. I'm going to see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.